Welcome to Math with Mrs. Cox. We are on page 316 in your math book, chapter 5, lesson 10, subtract decimals. The secret sauce today is going to be just to make sure you line up your decimals and that you're careful when you're subtracting that the number on top is big enough for you to subtract from. If not, you're going to have to do some borrowing. Let's begin. Example 1. By 19.8 minus 16.9. They estimate 19.8 to 20 and 16.9 to 17. So you can do that one in your head. 20 minus 17 is going to be the ripe old number of 3. And then now we need to find the actual answer. Come over here. We cannot take 8. We cannot take 9 from 8. So we need to borrow over here. Cross that out. Make it an 8. And then bring it over here to 18. So 18 minus 9 is going to be 9 left over. Then we have 8 minus 6, there will be 2 left over. So our answer is going to be 2.9. And we can do the inverse operation, which means the opposite of subtraction is going to be addition. So if we wanted to double check if this was right, we could do 2.9 and line up the decimals. Put a 16 here and a 9 right there. Put a placeholder right there. Add 9 plus 9 is 18. Bring down the decimal dot 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 splat. 6, 7, 8, 9. 19.8. Example 2. Find 6.3 minus 4.78. 6.3 is really close to 6. 4.78 is close to 5. So 6 minus 5 is 1. Now they have us line up the zeros. Then we have all of our numbers right here. Now 6.3 is what they have here. And they put 6.30. And they said annex a zero. But that's the same terminology as when I say put a placeholder. What they, done, what they did right here is just put a placeholder zero. So if we look at it, we have a problem. We cannot take eight from zero. So we're going to have to borrow from this friend. But then we'll have another problem because seven is going to be too big too. So we're going to have to borrow clear over here. So I'm going to start with that just right off the bat. This is going to change to a 5, and that's going to make this one would be a 13, but we have to borrow one of those to make it a 12, to bring one over here to make it a 10. Okay, are you with me? <clears throat> so we have 10 minus 8 is a beautiful number of 2. 12 minus 7 is 5, and 5 minus 4 is 1. So we can determine... That 6.3 minus 4.78 is going to be the answer of 1.52. 1.52. We can add that. Make sure you line up the decimals. Seven. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Dot 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 splat. 6.30, which is the same number that we started off right there. So we know we did it right. Good job. Number one, subtract. Use addition to check your answer. Okay, let's begin. 5.5 minus 3.2. We can take 2 from 5, so their answer is going to be 3. And 5, we can take 3 from, so their answer is going to be 2. 2.3 is our answer. We can estimate that 5.5 is close to 6. 3.2 is close to 3. So the estimated answer is about 2. Now, they want us to check 5.5 minus 3.2. Oh, excuse me. They want us to check in just a minute. Then we're going to do 2.3. And I'm just going to put it up here on top of this one. Then I can get 5.5. I know that's my answer, so we can check that we did it correctly. Number two. Oh, boy, this is going to be a good one. Five. We cannot take 5 from 4, so then we're going to have to borrow from the 2, so we can make that a 14. Then, if you look, now 2 is bigger than the 1, and we can't take 2 from 1, so then we're going to have to borrow from the 7. All right, I think we're good now to set up to go. So, 5 from 14 is going to be 9. 11 minus 2 is 9. And 6 minus 1 is 5. We can estimate that um, 72.4 is close to 70. And 12.5 is close to 10. So 70 minus 10 is 60. So we can say the original, the, or 
actual answer is 59.9. And we can go ahead and check it, 59.9. If you write it really little right here, then you can just go ahead and check 9, 10, 11, 12, 5, 6, 7, bring the dot, 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 dot splat, and we can see that 72.4 is what we had up here, so we must have done it right. Congratulations, friends. Check your work. Okay, number three. Now, you could do this in your head, or if it helps you keep your brain organized, you can add a placeholder zero there to help life out. Four minus zero is four, three minus zero is three, dot, 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 splat. Nine minus nine is zero and two. So 20.34, use addition to check your answer. This is where you go 20.34, then you plus nine. Four, three, dot, 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 splat. Bring the decimal down, nine, two. And that is the same number that we started with right there. So we are good to go. Yay, good job. Okay, number four. <clears throat> okay, four minus two is, well, two. Then we can just do. It's not hard, folks. This one to prove that you know what you're doing. Number five. <clears throat> we have seven minus five is two. Six minus three is three. That's a funny looking three, sorry. Nine minus two is seven. Then we're gonna go ahead and flip it around and do seven, 32 plus two, 35. Seven, six, seven, eight, nine, Yep, that's our original answer we started with. I wish our math was like this all the time, right? It's all right for it to be like this once in a while. Okay, number six. I'm going to put a couple placeholder zeros there just to help my life out a little bit. Hmm, I'm looking right here, and I cannot take eight from zero, so it looks like I'm going to have to go clear over here and borrow from that seven. That'll make it a six. That'll make that a ten, but it actually gets turned into a nine because i got to borrow one from here. So that's what it's going to look like to set it up. And there's going to be a couple of those doozies throughout this chapter. So pay attention. So 10 minus 8 is 2. 9 minus 9 is 0. Placeholder dot 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 0. Oh, sorry. Excuse me. Dot 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 splat. Decimal is what I meant to say. 6 minus 6 is 0. 9 minus 1 is 8. So our answer is 80.2. They want us to double check. So we're going to do 80.2 plus 16.98. 8, 9, 10, 9, 10, bring down the decimal, 6 plus 1 is 7, 8, 9, and helps if I write my 7 a little neater there, 9, there, is that better? And that is the same number we started with. Number 7, let's subtract 8 minus 2. And, oh, we can't do 5 from 2, so we're going to have to borrow from the 1's section, and then we can make that a 12. Now, there are 7 numbers between 5 and 12. Then I can do 1 minus 1 is 0. I'm going to bring that decimal down, and 4 will come down beautifully. Then I can just go 40 plus uh, 1, 5, 2. 6 plus 2 is 8, 12, 2, 4. And this number is what I started with, so we're on game. They sure like us to put placeholders in, don't they? And I cannot take 8 from 0, so then I'm going to have to come over here. And that's going to have to be a 7, which turns this to a 10. It gets crossed out to be a 9 for this to be a 10. So 10 minus 8. It's 2. 9 minus 7 is 2. 7 minus 5 is 2. Hey, that's kind of a fun number. So let's add it. So it's 2, 2, 2. Line up my decimal. There's a 5 in that place value, and then a 7 and 8 over here. 
8, 9, 10, 7, 8, 9, 10, 5, 6, 7, 8. Yep, that's what I started with. Number 9. Now they're going to see if you can line things up properly. Now here's the trick. Remember, this is a whole number. It's like saying we have $36. That's not what I meant to do. $36. So remember, there's always an a decimal that's right there on a whole number. So we have 36. Line up the decimal. And then on this side of the decimal, there's a 7. On this side of the decimal, there's a 3. And then I'm just going to put zeros right here just to kind of help my brain be organized into columns. And 0 minus 0 is 0. Oh, but I cannot take 3 from this 0. So I'm going to have to turn this one into a 5 to turn that one into a 10. We're going to have 7 right there. 5, oh, 7 cannot come out of 5, so i got to do this again. But 7 can come out of 15, and then I can bring the 3 down. So number 9 is going to be, oh, not, not a 3. My bad. Whew, almost had to pay someone. There we go, bring down the two. So our number is gonna be 28.70. Then we can just go 28.70 plus the 7.30. There we go. Number 10, line them up. We have 5.6 minus 3.5. Line up your decimals, then subtract the place values. 5 from 6 is 1. 2, I love it when I say the answer. 5 minus 3 is 2. Dot, 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 splat. V6, 5.6. And that is our original one we started with, so we are game. Number 11. Now I'm going to kind of write it over here so I have some room. 19.86, line up the decimals. There's a 9 on this side and then 94 and the symbol of subtraction. Okay, I've got everything all organized. All right, from 6, they're taking 4, so there's going to be 2 left over. But right here, I cannot take 9 from 8, so I'm going to have to borrow from this number over here. Now I can. The answer is going to be 9 dot 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 splat. Oh, I cannot take 9 from this 8. So I'm going to turn that to 0 and that to an 18. And now there's going to be 9 from that one. So my answer is going to be 9.92. And I'm going to add 9.92 plus 9.94. 6. Put a decimal. And there is my original problem. Oof. Okay, algebra. Okay, we had $15. We're going to spend six of it and 24 cents because they want us to see if we can navigate those zeros. So, cross, cross, cross. This one is going to be a four. This is going to be a 10, but I'm going to have to borrow one and turn it into a nine to make this a 10. So 10 minus 4 is 6, 9 minus 2 is 7, dot, 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 splat. 4, oh dear, I can't take 6 from 4, so that's going to have to be a 0 and bring that 1 over. Now I have um, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. There are 8 numbers in between. And then a dollar sign is going to be our label, and we have $8.76 left. And it doesn't tell me to use addition to check. So I'm not going to do the extra work if it's not going to tell me. Okay, here we go. We're going to do 8.2 and line up the decimal. 6 goes on this side, 72. Looks like I need a placeholder 0 right about there. And it is subtraction. All right, I cannot take 2 from 0. So I'm going to bar over here. And this is going to turn it into a 10. So that's going to be 8. Oh my goodness, I cannot take 7 from 1. So again, we're going to have to turn that into a 7, that into 11. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. There are 4 in between that. Bring down the decimal. 7 minus 6 is 1. Whew. So I'm just going to circle this answer here because my work kind of went crazy. And put it up here, 1.48.
so that you guys don't think the answer is 11. Number 14, I'm going to do my work over here at the side because apparently I like to write really big and proud. 58, 67, minus 28.72. Make sure everything's lined up. Those decimals are lined up. And over, over here, we have 7 minus 2 is 5. Oh, goodness. Now we have 7, though. We can't take 7 from 6. So we're going to have to borrow from that category. It's going to turn it into a 7, and this to 16. Then I know there's 9 in between that. Bring down the decimal, dot, 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 splat. And now we have the same problem. 8 cannot come from 7. It's going to have to borrow from that category. Then, what about that one? Now I know there's 9 in that one, too. Then we have 4 minus 2 is 2. So then my number is 29.95. Whew, that was a lot of work. All right, double check your work, my fine friends. And join me on the next page. Number 15, use the table to find out how many more people there are per square mile in Iowa than Colorado. So we're finding a difference because there's more and difference usually means subtraction. Okay. So they want to know how many more are in Iowa than in Colorado. So Iowa is obviously the bigger number. So I'm going to come over here and do my work over here. So Iowa is 50 to 40 and then Colorado is 41.5. All right, so right off the bat, I cannot take five from four, so I'm going to have to borrow from this category. Whoops. So I'm going to turn that into a one and that into a 14. So now five from 14 would be a nine. Bring down the decimal, dot, 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 splat. One minus one is zero. Five minus four is one. So then I have 10.9 more people. Population density per square mile. Number 16, explain to a friend you decide to buy a hat for $10.95 and a t-shirt for $14.20. How much change will you receive if you pay the $50 bill? Explain to a friend. Well, you can just explain it to me here on your paper. So what we need to do is we need to add $10.95 and the 14, 20, 5, 9, 10, 11. 4 plus 1 is 5. Okay, so we have spent that much money. And we're going to pay the $50 bill. So now this is where we take $50. And then we subtract the total cost of all the items. And of course, we're going to have to change these zeros out. Five cannot come from zero, so we're going to have to go clear across here. That's going to be a four, nine, nine, ten. Now, that looks a little bit easier to do. We can take five from ten and make it five. Nine minus one is eight, dot, 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 splat. Nine minus five is four, and four minus two is two. So our answer is we're going to have... $24.85. And they want to explain to a friend. So how we're just going to explain to it is that we point over here that we did all of our equations. Make sure you have those equations down. Brain builders, number 17. Coach, trainer, timed his athletes running the 40-yard dash. The fastest time was that many seconds. And the difference between the fast or the slowest and the fastest was this much time. Find the slowest time. Okay. So you want to be fast when you do the dash. Okay. So we have 4.58. And they want to find the slowest time. So if you're slower, it means that you took longer to run. Follow me? So if you took longer to run, then you have to add the extra time. And it 
it's going to look like this. Bring down the decimal. So the time they ran, the slower time, which is still pretty fast, seconds. See, look a little better. Okay, number 18, explain how place value can be used to find the difference of 4.23 and 2.75. So they pretty much want to say you have to regroup because when you subtract it, and you can go ahead and write out the problem like this. Because you can take 5 from 5 just fine. And you have the problem right here when you're trying to take 7 from 2. They want you to regroup, turn that into a 3, turn that into a 12. So then your answer is 5 and 1. So you're going to say um, you need to regroup. And just make sure you have this equation over here. Okay, check your work. Join me on 